What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Scripted Legend. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Scripted Legend, bringing you guys another YouTube video on Scripted... Ooh, not Scripted Legend, on Evergrow Coin. And in this particular video, we're about to talk about Atlas Wallet and the Certic Audit and how that thing is going. Um, some of you guys aren't even familiar or knowing that Atlas Wallet is being Certic audit, um, audited. And some of you guys don't even know that wallets do get <laughs> certified or do get audited yes they do it is very much needed for a wallet to be audited trust wallet has a has an audit trust swap has an audit and let's go see if metamask does and i believe they do wow it's crazy they actually aren't on here metamask because i spelt it wrong uh there we go see there we go metamask is on here as well i was about to say they definitely are <laughs> but yeah so it's it's great that atlas wallet is getting that certification something that some cryptocurrency um projects don't actually do um uh, because it costs more money as well that's a big thing but atlas wallet is getting that and we have received some good news back they're currently 85 percent done with the project reviewing uh, they've done the KYC process and completed it, and the team has received a gold KYC verification in the midst of that, uh, a tier one geo risk. The geo risk is the core team is situated in country, uh, uh, The geo risk goes as far as described as follows. The core team is situated in countries that received the best aggregated ratings in terms of international du judicial cooperation, criminal justice system, anti-money laundering, and corruption. This contextual uh, data suggests the high level, the highest level of geographic accountability, thus maximizing the risk reduction and mitigation. So we are in the tier one or EGC or Atlas wallet is in the tier one of that. And we also see that the project maturity metrics are low. Now, I would suggest to you guys to think of this as you do your credit cards, right? Or your credit. If you've only been alive for 20 years and you don't you open your credit accounts at 18 or 19, they're going to give you a low credit. They're going to give you low credit maturity because you haven't actually done anything. Similarly with here with the uh, project maturity metrics. Uh, so don't say don't think low in here min minimally developed. That means that, oh, this t project isn't even mature. One, it has not launched yet. So that is true. It's currently in beta. But two. It's just that would also mean that it's not tested. That's all that means. It hasn't been tested. It hasn't been out to market for a while. We come down to the website scan of Atlas Wallet. The network security was raked high. <laughs> the DNS health high, and the application security in it of itself was given a medium. All right, so no three highs, but thankfully no lows. <laughs> so. Where did they get the where's the attention at for it when it comes to application security? Uh, missing an X frame option, missing HSTS header, missing X content um, tie, and one other thing that they did not show. Oh, missing content security uh, policy S SCP, and that was missing X content type options header. Now, regarding some of these errors, keep in mind not all of them are actually high severity, hence why they still had a high score for the network security, the application security, and the DNS health. Uh, but when we go over here to look at the missing X content type options header, which is under the application security, which I want to look at first because that is the medium um, of all of them, uh, and that is one of four intent uh, attentions. Uh, missing X content type options header is when it prevents the browser from doing MIME type sniffing. Uh, most browsers are now respecting this header, um, including Chrome, um, Chrome and Edge extensions, and, um, or Chrome and Edge, including 
Firefox as well. So another thing was the missing X frame options header. And that is a vulner. Mm, sorry about that. That is a vulnerability uh, similar to code extension via web dev and is reported with low level severity. Um, I'm not going to continue to banter on with this geek talk over here, but if you want more details, here it is. Uh, what is categorized um, and based off of codes that actually do mean something, but the everyday listener doesn't know these things. So I'm not going to bore, bore you guys too much with that talk. Um, they also was missing a HTS, HSTS header. Um, sometimes an IT security uh, scan might report that uh, that your site is missing a HSTS or H H HTTP uh, strict transport security headers. And they say they have ways to encounter or how to handle these errors when you encounter these things um because if you encounter this error then your site isn't using hsts which means your https uh, redirects and may be putting visitors at risk so that's why they actually highlight it uh so these are some these are this is just information to help you guys understand what these errors are so it's not just geek talk that you don't understand at least putting some knowledge to it now https if you're not familiar http is usually what you see up here in your in your little link um and https the s stands for secured uh so that's what the s stands for uh what does http stand for as a whole i actually am going to look it up because i I learned it because I am a computer science grad, but I forgot it. And it's hypertext transfer protocol. Uh, <laughs> hypertext transfer protocol. So hypertext is text that actually has a link to something. And the hypertext transfer protocol is basically this message up here so all of this text up here indicate that you is the protocol and it's saying that you want to go to search brave or you want to go to the brave browser the search brave um web and you want to search these things as well you want to search missing space in between that's what the plus sign indicates header uh or hsts plus or space header and source equals desktop or whatever um so that's yeah that and it starts combining it and the s at the end like i said is just the secure part um and this whole process as you see over here now the https is popping up over here but this is this whole thing this the HTTPS thing just indicates this is a long protocol. Uh, so yeah, there's some geek talk for y'all. <laughs> I had to go back to my. I had to remember what I was learning in school <laughs> for that one. But we digress from that uh, because the last thing that they said for the fourth intention um, was just a missing content security policy, uh, and I think we need to move on just quite honestly i think we need to move on uh let's go to the network security so there was ss ssh protocol supports weak cipher suits uh ssh supports weak mac um or message uh message authentication code and then the cve on on the related uh related service uh the related service has un has a known vulnerability uh so that was under network security. Again, keep in mind, it was ranked high. So these are more than likely what? Low hanging fruits that can just boost the security of the, um, of the network. Um, by the way, SSH stands for uh, a, shield, a secure shell. Um, a secure shell is a protocol method for securely sending commands to a computer over an unsecured network. SSH uses 
cryptography to authenticate and encrypt connections between devices. Uh, so that's a nice little uh, Google a Google definition because I'm not going to sit here and try to explain SSH and it takes up 29, 30% of this video. But it's a widely used protocol for secure remote access to servers and other network devices. Uh, so if it supports weak ciphers that can become an issue disabling weak ciphers in ssh is crucial to bolstering the overall security posture of your systems on most systems open ssh supports the following the following you can read it for yourself someone told me that y'all can that i can do math so go ahead and use that <laughs> use your reading skills and read that <laughs> but a uh, remote ssh is uh server is configured to allow a uh, weak encryption algorithms or no algorithm at all uh, so that was that was that one when it comes to the weak supporting weak ciphers and when it comes to supporting weak Mac uh, Couldn't get any details on that just that there was the, be the best way to configure the algorithms you want to use um, It's just something along the first line here uh, some more people that have the more exchanges of knowledge basically um, but mac alg or ssh mac algorithms message authentication um algorithms are used to validate data integrity and authenticity a mac algorithm should not be conflated with a mac message authentication code as these are two distinct components uh the mac algorithm uses a message and a private key to do the things that it does and last but certainly not least cve which stands for common vulnerabilities and exposures which is a free service that in identifies and catalogs known software and firmware vulnerabilities it is not an actionable vulnerability database but a standardized dictionary of publicly known vulnerabilities and exposures cve is used by many security related products and services such as a vulnerability management and remediation intrusion detection incident management and along some other things the list of cves is built by cve numbering authority cnas we're going to stop this talk but you have it on your screen if you want to pause it and read it all right because this video is getting a little lengthy and I know my listeners want to get to the good stuff, all right? Uh, but you guys might consider this good stuff. So I'm happy that you guys actually want to know these things. Um, it is missing the DNS as far as the DNS is concerned. It is missing a domain-based uh, message, uh, message authentication reporting and conformance uh, DMARC um, record. So that is something, that is the only thing that was reported in the certic audit uh, and dns stands for a domain name system um, matter of fact since we're just going in depth on everything we might as well make this video the in-depth version of this whole entire thing and you guys get to hear it from someone in tech who's still learning more about tech every day um, this reading these things actually have helped me learn even more things about what's going on behind the scenes um, when i'm working um, if you encounter the error message, though, of no DMARC record found, it means that your domain does not have a DMARC reject policy. And the DMARC is a framework for authenticating email by using, sorry, by using SPF, which stands for Sender Policy Framework, and domain keys, identified mail, um, identified mail, DKIM. To verify to use uh, the use of the domain in the visible uh, from header, if a DMARC record is not configured, though, uh, for a domain, it may be possible for an attacker to send spoofed mail emails, which can be used to trick people into giving up sensitive information.
To fix the error, you need to add a DMARC record for your domain by typing the record in a TXT format in your DNS. I probably just opened Pandora's box because now people are going to be in the comment section of on Twitter and or and or known as X now and saying, "Hey guys, um, read watch Script of Legends video or just read and." did some looking into the certic audit and you guys just need to do these things to fix these um these issues and i i will say this i appreciate you guys doing that or tweeting those things because it does show that you do care um and you do want ever go to prosper so i'm not going to fault you at all for that um i'm just saying this for those who assume this team is inadequate when the when the answer or the solution is online, even though the solution says it's online, or even though you see a solution that's online, doesn't mean that solution is actually the solution that you need. That solution can lead to a lot of errors um, added on and make a lot more things worse. And sometimes some things that are especially yeah, some things are going to just take longer to find out to make sure that to ensure that it's of long-term fix and that is a fix that can also be scalable and can adapt to future changes um when it comes to the way that security has to be constantly adapted and scalable um but this is also following the atlas wallet page itself uh, that's why i'm saying based off of the active followers and the total tweets it has um but yeah so that's that Outside of that, there's nothing else to talk about. That was the Certic audit. We can go over and just look over some of the things that happened with the trading. Uh, only eleven thousand dollars in trading um, volume today. We just saw, just, just, just saw a twelve hundred dollar buy, and that was, like I said, just that just happened. That was eighteen um, minutes ago of the recording of this video, and that was seventeen billion Evergrow tokens um worth of a transaction and out of all the transactions today or the last 24 hours there was 47 and 25 of them were buys 22 of them were sales and it has led to a 0.74 percent increase in the tr uh in the price and as far as the bnb decentralized transactions are concerned there is an uptick in trading volume uh, actually, a 66% growth in trading volume for B, uh, BNB tokens with the biggest dog that's getting all that trading volume being the USDT pairs. <laughs> the USDT pairs are getting over one thirds of it. The USDT, the WBNB pair right here um, is 66, 67.67 million dollars. And then the next W USDT, the WBNB um bnb pair is 34.54 million dollars then the next one after that is 19 million dollars and then even if you keep going down you see again some more usdt to um other token pairs um, one still wbnb seven million uh seven million seven or six million so it's making the usdt is taking up all of the money right now which makes sense because I just think this is a scenario where people are just trying to trade um, their tokens for they're just trying to find the most stable investment right now with where the market is at. And it's not people that are actually necessarily trading their tokens for their WBNB for USDT. They're the majority of people are selling or in other words, buying wrapped BNB with the USDT um how do how how am i saying that if you guys don't understand pairs let me explain it to you pairs are necessarily in crypto it's not necessarily a buy or a sell it's always it's like that word is kind of hit or miss because one person would say if you're a usdt and you're trading your token for another token you just sold your usdt but in all actuality, you exchanged or you traded your asset for a different or transferred your asset holdings into another asset 
uh, to be held in in the form of it or to be held in the form of a new asset. So I'm probably confusing you. I pray that I'm not. When it comes to a USDT on top to WBNB on the bottom pair, it means that if you buy USDT, you are transferring. In those terms, you are transferring your WBNB or your wrapped BNB, uh, your wrapped Binance tokens into the USDT, into a stable coin. But if you sell, then you are trading, transferring your USDT to now your holdings of whatever into wrapped BNB. So that's the act- that's the case. That's what's going on right now. More people are turning their USDT into wrapped BNB. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the thousand the, the the day Evergrow is seeing sixty eight thousand mil uh, sixty eight million dollars a day in a, in rough markets. Um, uh, <laughs> that will be a really good day for investors because that'll be a lot of money going to the staking pools. And making a lot of investors a lot of money. Uh, you see it here as well, though. People are still, again, trading their USDT for a wrapped BNB. More so than trading their wrapped BNB for USDT. But all that being stated, I wanted to go into Pulse. And you know what? We might as well just go ahead and do that and just make this a super lengthy video. If you enjoy this type of type of content, please hit a like and let me know you're still watching by hitting um by saying um appreciate the knowledge scripted. Say that. Appreciate the knowledge. That's all you got to do. Um we see though that post is up in volume 19.19.17% um, and they are seeing 30 million dollars of trading volume. Um, for the last 24 hours on decentralized exchanges. Why am I looking at that? Because Atlas Wallet is getting ready to have Pulse Chain or Pulse tokens on there. And I'm not saying we're going to get $30 million. <laughs> I'm not saying that. But we can get a nice little portion, especially because only MetaMask is the one that, that I'm aware of. It's the only wallet that you can actually view your post tokens in. I don't think we trust Wallet has gotten to that point yet. Hopefully they do. But this is going to really set Atlas Wallet apart from a lot of wallets. There's many wallets that only support one chain. And there's multiple wallets that support multiple chains but can't handle off-ramp and on-ramp purchases both at the same or both both of them included on the same network sorry for that but that's the truth it's the truth that is that is facts and atlas wallet will be able to support that don't get stuck in the mindset of well the big dogs trust wallet and atlas wallet can offer these things let's worry about the the dogs on our level right now <laughs> all right because at the beginner's level we got to be able to be better than them and offer more than them and that was all we'll be able to do those things and some, including Luna Sky and including Lucro Token as well. I'm going to cut the video here because, as I've stated time and time again, this video is a little lengthy, a lot lengthier than I um, planned on it to be. But people are loving Atlas Wallet. Fortnite has EGC integrated. Just joking. Might make that the thumbnail. Might make that the title. Um, but... <laughs> If you got to this point, then you got to explain. Fortnite has Evergrow in there. Massive adoption coming and coming. Um, but no, on a serious note, everybody's excited about the Atlas Wallet um, Certic uh, and how things are going. Uh, Sam stated, so the Atlas build with Certic recommendations has dropped today. So the recommendations for you fake IT people. Or you, you IT people that want to do every, that don't want to sleep, because I'm an IT person that wants to sleep. The recommendations has dropped today. It's so smooth, loving it already. The beta te beta testers will thoroughly work through it and will keep everything crossed that Certic, um, that Certic are happy with the improvements. Uh, have a great weekend, Evergrow fam. So they were included. 
But guess what? Staking comes first. That was in response to the plan was Luna Sky, then staking, then Atlas. Having in mind Atlas seems more ready than Luna Sky, can we expect the wallet launch before the marketplace if Atlas is ready? Staking will come first. After that, whichever is ready will come past it. Uh huh. Quote it. Quote it. Staking will come first. From yours truly, Sam. All right. I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you at the next one. Put in that work. Now it's time to put in that work in the editing. If you want to support the channel, um, then by all means, I'm going to leave a donation uh, contract address that you can donate to um, down in the comment section down or in the description of this video. So if you want to do that, by all means, do so. The, if you want to know where it's going to, uh, I want to buy a PC so I can have more efficient content or i can post videos faster i can record more efficiently with less choppiness and less bugs every here and there and also be able to play the play to earn games that evergrow will be on that gfall has out and that other tokens have out so we can really expand the channel itself um money will also be going to um getting an editing team um it's when i can so that we can have even more videos, but also have more quality and professional content. That's the biggest goal is to release more professional content. So I, I can spend more time making videos than I do making and editing videos. Uh, so that's the goal. And then third thing that that money would also go to is ad. Um, it's ads, not getting partnerships and not getting ads to come over to my um, channel, but actually growing the channel and putting videos out there for the audience or for other audiences to see and paying for that to be done so if you want to support that and support this channel then be by all means do so just remember staking will come first after that whichever is ready first love you all you have a blessed one stay safe peace